Tennessee. Used to love sweet tea, salt, pepper, and spinderella. Nigga, I'm bigger, Bella. Baby, I'm quicker on the draw, cause I bossed up. Some must say big was the best. I say it's a toss up. I be staying frost up. Trinkets, dangle off the left arm. Hey guys, how's it going? With Mayweather vs. Pacquiao fast approaching, that doesn't mean that that's the only content we're going to get on this channel. You know, there's all these other channels where, truly, after Mayweather vs. Pacquiao, there's really no need for them to be in business. And you know what I'm talking about. So today we're going to be taking a look at Roy Jones, some of his southpaw tactics, and I truly hope you enjoyed this video. Before we go any further, I have to say a huge thank you to everybody who watches, likes, comments on, and shares my videos. Thank you so much. And, and of course, just an amazing achievement, 10,000 subscribers. This is a huge milestone. And honestly, I didn't think it'd take me this, you know, this quickly to get to 10,000 subscribers. My first film study video was in May of 2014. So you can see that in the one year anniversary of the channel, pretty much, you know, 10,000 subscribers on the verge of Mayweather versus Pacquiao. So this is truly just an amazing situation. Once again, thank you to everybody and please enjoy the video. All right, so in my Mayweather versus Pacquiao prediction video, I talked about Roy Jones moving to the inside against the South Pole, you know, something that Floyd Mayweather also utilizes. What this really means is that, of course, he's moving towards that straight left hand. As you can see here now versus Otis Grant, you can see uh, Roy Jones circling to his right, which is moving towards that straight left hand of the South Pole. This is what's also known as moving to the inside against the South Pole. When you move to your left, which is conventional wisdom, you're moving to the outside. Okay, so that's just a basic foundational premise. Now, a lot of people will say, why is Floyd, for example, moving the wrong way against the South Pole? Why is Roy Jones moving the wrong way against the South Pole? There is no wrong way or right way to move against anybody in boxing. The foundational concept people must be aware of in boxing is that everything has benefits and disadvantages. Moving to the outside has its benefits. Moving to the inside has its benefits. They also all have disadvantages. This is the reason why it's a sweet science. There's no right way or wrong way to do anything. So we're going to do a detailed breakdown of some of Roy Jones' tactics against Southpaws and really just show you why he had so much success doing what he did. The first tactic we see from Roy Jones is the way he utilizes his lead hand to keep his opponent at bay as he circles to the inside against the Southpaw. Roy would use his lead hand in an extended motion. In other words, he would use it to control range, to measure his distance, and to occupy his opponent. You notice how Roy likes to check the lead hand of the south pole as he circles to the inside. Roy Jones is keeping that lead hand in front of his opponent in order to utilize it as a first line of defense. You see how he then sets up that straight right hand while moving to the inside against the south pole, and then he pounces on his opponent. In this case, Reggie Johnson. Much like what Floyd does today, Pay attention to how Roy Jones is going to step that lead foot to the inside when he attempts to jab with the southpaw. Very good tactic if you want to get your jab in there. The similarities between the way Floyd fights southpaws and the way Roy Jones fights southpaws is very difficult to avoid. It is crucial to know that Roy did not seek to gain lead foot dominance against the southpaw. As I said in the previous video, when Roy keeps his lead foot on the inside, there's almost no tells when he's about to lead with the straight right hand. Notice how he pivots to the inside as he shoots this punch, turning his hips as he does so. And here again we see the same situation as he leads with multiple right hands while moving to the inside against the southpaw. But this is not to say that Roy did not know how to establish lead foot dominance against the southpaw. He of course knows about the conventional wisdom. Before we go any further, I feel the need to talk about the boxing stance of Roy Jones. You know, just to give a foundational breakdown as to why Roy Jones was able to do a number of things. Your boxing stance will play a role in the type of fighter that you can be. And this was very crucial for Roy Jones. Notice here against Reggie Johnson now. As you pay attention to Roy Jones, you see that we notice he holds his right hand in a very advanced position. His right arm is tucked close to his body and his glove is outstretched in front of his chin, which makes it very good for parrying his opponent's offense. We also notice that Roy would bring his right shoulder into a more advanced position, almost to the point of squaring up his shoulders. In other words, his right shoulder was almost level with his left shoulder. And we're going to come and talk about this when it comes to analyzing how Roy would lead with straight right hands. 
not even just against Southpaws, but against every opponent that he faced, it did play a role. So you see Roy Jones actually shaved off fractions of a second on his right hand leads because as we said earlier in the video, Roy would hold his right hand in an advanced position and because he brings his right shoulder almost level with his left shoulder, Roy Jones' straight right hand didn't need to travel the same distance as a typical right hand lead. And there we see him lead versus Reggie Johnson pivoting to the inside against the southpaw. Brilliant technique. And of course, Roy Jones defensively responsible rolling Reggie Johnson's left hand off of his right shoulder as he simultaneously pulls his head out of the way of a possible counter. Beautiful boxing from Roy Jones Jr. Now we're going to take a look at a 1-2 combination from Roy Jones. Pay attention to how Roy Jones steps his lead foot to the inside against the southpaw as he leads with his jab. I mean, I just can't stress this enough. Southpaws, you know, they don't have superpowers. We truly can jab with the southpaw. See the right hand that he comes over with as he pivots to the inside of the southpaw. Beautiful technique. Once again, stepping that lead foot to the inside is how all of this began as he shoots his jab, which of course is the most crucial punch in boxing. And of course, Roy Jones continues to make it look like a video game. You know, Roy Jones is just one of those guys who truly made boxing look like a video game sometimes. I mean, and I mean that with no disrespect to Otis Grant, but you know. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at what I call the Roy Jones overhand left hook, which he used to counter the jab of the southpaw so many times. Truly, I say to you, this was my most favorite punch that Roy Jones used. And out of everything Roy Jones did, this was the thing I love seeing him do the most. And up the middle by Jones. Was whitewashed in one round of Jones Pazian. Heavyweight champions, Bob Foster, Jose Torres. Gifted, he started off in a lighter weight. Just like one of those jet pilots. Roy Jones did some amazing things in the ring. You know, things like multiple left hooks while moving backwards, something I've never seen before. And while that's very high on my list of some of the most amazing things Roy Jones did, there's just something about the way Roy Jones would counter the jab of the southpaw with this overhand left hook that just left a smile on my face every single time. I mean, this is a punch that comes from a location where it's outside the field of vision of the southpaw opponent and it lands on the blind side of the southpaw and there you see him follow it up with a right hand. Just a beautiful thing to watch Roy Jones do. Let's take a closer look at this overhand left hook by Roy Jones. The first thing we notice is Roy keeps his lead hand in a low position. He also keeps it very close to his body and outside the field of vision of the southpaw opponent. The jab comes in and Roy Jones slips the jab and parries it at the same time. Then he counters with the overhand left hook, coming from an angle whereby it lands on the blind side of the southpaw. Very, very excellent technique from Roy Jones. Watch again how he keeps his lead hand low and close to his body against Reggie Johnson. See how he keeps that lead hand out of the field of vision of the southpaw, parries and slips the jab and then counters. And pay attention again, lead hand very low close to the body and then he counters over the top on the blind side of the southpaw. I think the reason why I have such a fascination with this punch is because Roy Jones, just like Floyd Mayweather, make a very complex maneuver and a very complex technique look so simple and easy in its execution. This is for the blocks, yeah, the south side road. I hope you've enjoyed this 10,000 subscriber special on Roy Jones Jr. Truly one of the best to ever be in that squared circle. I also hope you enjoyed the build up to Mayweather vs Manny Pacquiao on this channel. I thank you all for watching and I'd also like to say that after Mayweather vs Pacquiao, this is one of those channels that keeps on going strong. I thank you all, have a good one and I'll see you in the next one. I don't need them all, less bags filled up Watch cops, cause they coming to kill us Real plush, all my niggas shit clean Off that Yola, and they get never mix it with soda Cola, rocks like boulders, whoa Baby, she's stressing with me to hold her, no, no